on the recording. If you go to kenspencer.com, all the, all the recordings will be here. And I'm going to put links in for a lot of the different videos and different things like that whole keynote video. And I'll tell you, it was wonderful. So um, the way I describe an iPhone to people ever since day one is it's a computer that happens to make phone calls. And when I say iPhone, of course, now it applies to iPad. The iPad kind of makes phone calls. But anyway, it really is more than just a phone. It's a complete computer. In fact, it's a more capable computer from day one than this computer right here because it has a compass. It has a GPS. It has the iPod built in. It's portable, and I can always keep it with me. It has a wonderful camera. In fact, the camera's gotten better and better, and it's a fantastic camera, which we'll talk about a little later. Um, the, iPad, the iPhone, and of course, we have the iPod Touch, which is essentially like this without the ability to make phone calls. Then we have the iPads, the iPad Mini and the full-sized iPad. And they all work on the same operating system. Up until iOS 6, and until we went to iOS 7, the interface was very, very similar. And uh, I'll show you later the interface well, on this phone here. In fact, let me see if I can bring it up. Here is pretty much, not exactly, but it's the original interface. Oh, come on. Reflector. I'm able to show my phone on... This is through the iPhone 5. And we're looking at, that's the original iPhone screen right there. OK. So it was pretty simplistic, but that, this is like the second round when the App Store came out. This is iOS 3. But realistically, when the first iPhone came out, it was pretty much what we have now with all the different stocks and weathers and different things like that. And I started to talk about the plans back then. AT&T was the exclusive supplier or place to get iPhones, not to get iPhones, but to use the iPhone service at the time. I said Pete and I had these Sony Ericsson phones and we were paying for this internet. And we were paying for internet on a little itty bitty phone that you could hardly use it and I think it was 25 bucks a month. It had just raised up to 30. The people with trios and Blackberries we're paying $45 to $65 a month for their internet only, not for the voice plans. That was just for the internet. Well, somehow, Steve Jobs being very convincing, was able to convince AT&T. When the iPhone first came out, we didn't know how much the data plan was going to be. And I'm a really cheap person. And I don't like monthly, th monthly ongoing things. But I knew I wanted the phone. And I was, I was saying, God, you know, if it's going to be 45 a month, I just don't think I'll do it. And that would be in addition to the voice plan. Well, luckily, when it first came out, it was, what, $25 a month or $20 a month? Al, do you remember? So it, the way it came out on AT&T with the original iPhone is your data portion of it, the iPhone plan, was, I think, 25 or 30 a month, which to me made it reasonable. And I, and I think the big thing was the majority of people, unlike real high techie guys that were stupid techie like Pete and I that we'd pay for it no matter what, most people had never had data on their phones. It was simply a cell phone. They, they were having text probably, but not internet. So by Apple convincing AT&T to do it for such a low price, the barrier of admission, that little wall you have to jump over to get into the iPhone, was significantly lower. I really believe that it was $45 to $65, just like it was on the Trios and the Blackberries, the iPhone would not have prospered like it did. So to AT&T's credit, they took a hit on it. They hated it after a while because what they realized is this thing's so functional on the internet that it uses tons of data. But that's also why they had an exclusive for three years on the thing. So um, I don't know how much of that was really planned, but it, the way it fell into place was really, really good. Because here's some guy who's willing to spend money on tech, and I might not have done it until later I realized what it would do. If not, then for that. 
I waited in line. I only waited about two hours in line for mine, and the launch day was June 29th of 2007, and uh, never looked back. For me, it was really pretty priceless because I got the phone in June. My father, who was 82 at the time, uh, went in the hospital for a while, and while he was in the hospital, I was able when he was I was able to be there while he was sleeping. I could look up some of the medications, look up some of the things that were going on. I could watch movies. I could do all of that while sitting in the hospital. But the best experience for me was I was able to play a little video that was a hand puppet thing where they see these shadow puppets that they do these remarkable things, and it was it just so happened it was his favorite song in the world, and I was able to present that to him. He died months later, but it was really for me. It made the experience just so worth it. And at the time, we had to pay $5.99 for our iPhone. Apple lowered the price after that, and then now you guys can get iPhones for free, basically, as long as you sign a two-year contract. After the break, we're going to go into plans, because plans have changed dramatically as far as how you can buy internet for your phone. There are plans down to $30 a month, including text and voice. So. Again, there's tons of features inside both phones, the new and the old. Um, I'll have the other one up here. I mean, I can pass this around so you guys can see. Old school, that's the original iPhone. Um, they came in four gigabyte and eight gigabyte models. And I was lucky enough, I was at the AT&T store over on uh, Truxel, and I was lucky enough to uh, wait in line, and I knew I wanted an eight gigabyte, and I didn't really want a four gigabyte, and I got the last eight gigabyte in the store. <laughs> so I was really lucky. I was really lucky to be able to spend, and the eight gigabyte was $6.99 instead of $5.99, so I was really lucky to be able to spend that extra $100. Uh, Apple did the right thing uh, later on when they did another iter a, kind of a half iteration of the phone. They lowered the price on the phone, uh, $200, and they gave us all a $100 uh, Apple gift card credit. So they did the right thing on that regard, but I, to me it was priceless. It was well worth it, and to this day it is. All right. Um, during the second half of the class, we're going to go through, we'll, we'll try to do some question and answers and different things like that, but I see a lot of new faces, and I want to go through and make sure we cover some of the basics of the phone and then dig down in and see some of the other features you have. Now, before we go on, I want to find out if this, is there anyone here that, Either who doesn't have Siri in their phone? Now, not if you don't know, but do you know that if you don't have Siri on your phone? Okay. Okay. So the rest of you, you're not sure or you're not. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk about a little bit of Siri in there because to me that's the future. And Siri is probably the one reason that you want to upgrade your older hardware to newer hardware because going forward it's fantastic. It really, really is. It takes the iPhone as this great computer. And it in, inserts this thing as what's called a personal assistant. And ladies, you can now change Siri's voice to be a male voice if you'd like to. So before, you used to have to use the, the Australian voice or the British voice to get a guy. But then, of course, flavor and color were all spelt with U's in them if you changed it to that voice. <laughs> all right. So I think I'll bring up my iPad also because they're the same. The iPad and the iPhone, they're the same. The only thing added with the iPhone is it can make phone calls. There are ways on the internet to make phone calls on your iPad also if you're traveling. Actually, speaking of traveling, if you travel out of the country, plan ahead because your iPhone, you, if, you're, if you don't do it correctly, you can come back with thousands and thousands of dollars on your bill. I know some people that come back with a $7,000 bill, and they didn't even realize it, and they weren't using it. So then, here's, here's, here's it's kind of like, they come back, and then they talk to the uh, cell phone company, and, the, and they're like, these people are freaked out. They got a $7,000 bill. Well, we'll cut that in half for you. <laughs> okay, so instead of shooting you, I'm going to stab you. I mean, that's really what it amounts to. But... Either way, uh, you know, it's, it's just fore, forewarned is, is just the best way to go. 
there's a thing called airplane mode. In fact, let's show that right now, airplane mode, because I think that's important. So I'm going to go to my iPhone. And in settings, which is in the lower right, the gray gear, you guys don't have to do this, and I don't want you to set, put it in airplane mode, and I won't. But at the very top here, you see a thing called airplane mode. Right up here. If you flip that lever over, it turns off every radio on your phone. Well, Ken, how many radios are there? There's a GPS, which is essentially a radio receiver. There's Bluetooth. There's Wi-Fi. There's the voice side of cellular and the data side of cellular. So if you flip that off, first of all, you'll get great battery life. But second of all, your phone will just be essentially have no radio. So it's not really a brick, but you can still use it. You can still use any, like if you have music on here and listen to it and stuff. But it will help your radio uh, or help your battery life. What you can also do when you travel overseas, if you haven't arranged to have an international plan, you can turn airplane mode on. It's a bit of an oxymoron. You turn it on to turn the radios off. And then you go back into Wi-Fi and you can turn just Wi-Fi back on. So in other words, if you go to an internet cafe, which of course you wouldn't get any charges unless the internet cafe itself charges you. There'd be no ongoing data charges. The other thing while we're on this screen, go down to cellular and make sure data roaming is off. If you go down, if you go down by the Mexican border or up by the Canadian border and you accidentally, it starts picking up the carrier from the other country it may start charging you. I was in San Diego right on, on Coronado Island, or actually at uh, North Point Naval Air Station, and I could get Telcel from Mexico better than I could get AT&T, which is a whole other story about AT&T. But, um, so I, I had data roaming off, so, and what I actually did is, I pulled up my GPS and did a screenshot of my GPS so that if I got an international bill while I was down there, I'd say, uh-uh, I was in San Diego. So how I did a screenshot, what I actually did is I went to my maps, we'll go over maps in a minute, and I said, here, zoom me into where I am. And the home button, which is the middle button, the, on the face, and the top button, and I clicked it, and it added it to my camera roll. That's how you take a screenshot. You don't have to get another iPhone and take a picture of this iPhone or do anything like that. That's a screenshot. You hit them both. Concurrently, go ahead. Oh, there's a button on the top. So the button on the top is the sleep wake button. That's the sleep wake button. Don't ever use that to turn your phone off because you don't need to turn your phone off. It's a sleep wake button, but yes, you can use that to turn it on and off. But all you do is you tap the home button in it at the same time and it will take a shot of your screen. You'll hear it go click like a camera click. Okay, But I did that to mark my spot on the map and the fact that I had Telcel showing up top, so I just said, hey, you know what? If they try to bill me, I'm covered. All right. So, uh, oh, back, so that was the cellular roaming. Just make sure data roaming is off. Now, if you are in Europe and you want to make sure you don't get any charges, you can turn off all your cellular data here. But the safest way, turn it on airplane mode. Like if I'm on a cruise, I'll put it on airplane mode. When I get to shore, if I'm international, when I get to shore, I'll turn the Wi-Fi on. And a little tip, the farther from the cruise boat, the less expensive the Wi-Fi cafes become. So you can get down and away and you can use their Wi-Fi. And you'll never, you'll only be charged for what the Wi-Fi cafe charges you to use their Wi-Fi. This applies to the iPad also. All right. Oh, let's see if that shows it doesn't, okay. So I have the fingerprint reader on mine, that's the new one. All right, I'm gonna go around the phone, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's quite all right. You say never turn your phone off? Okay, there's no need to ever turn your phone off, but you can put it to sleep. So if I press and hold the top button, I get slide to power off. Now, sometimes you're going to want to do that to restart the phone, do that, and then turn it back on, because sometimes that kind of self-heals if you've got things being misbehaving, 
But there's no need to ever turn it all the way off. Same with your iPad. Uh, for instance, in sleep mode, your iPad will last for 30 days without having to recharge it, just in sleep mode. And on your phone, if, you're, if, you're, if you want to go into a theater or something, yes, you can turn it off. But you also have a thing on the side called the sleep or the uh, the silent button. It's the little slider button, right above. You guys have your volume controls right on top of it. If it's in, if it shows orange, it means it's on mute. It won't sh it won't play your ring when it rings. So if you put that on when you're in a theater, don't worry. You'll you'll feel the vibration, but you won't hear it ring. If you have an alarm set, the alarm will ring though. <laughs> So make sure you don't have alarms up. But see, that's really handy because I can leave mine on mute. My phone is always with me. But at night, I can put it on mute and I don't receive phone calls. But I have my alarm set because it's the best alarm in the world. And my alarm will ring through. It'll ring the alarm. Okay? Uh, Al, remind me to do find my iPhone in the second half because it'll apply to that. So... Go ahead. Um, will it go to voicemail when you have... Nothing will change functionally. So her question was, will it go to voicemail? Nothing will change functionally if you have it on mute other than the fact that it won't ring. If I get an incoming call, it won't ring. <laughs> it'll show it's ringing and it'll vibrate, but it won't ring the phone. So it's a ring silencer is all it is. So it'll make it go to voicemail. It won't make it go to voicemail. It's the same as if your ringer was on and you let it sit there for five rings and then it finally goes to voicemail. If you have it on silent, you just won't hear the rings, but it'll take the same amount of time to go to voicemail. Does that make sense? So all it's doing, think of it this way, it's unplugging the ringer is all it's doing. Nothing else changes. If you get a call and you want it to go to voicemail, you can tap the top right away. All right, we're on calls. So Al, could you, uh, would you mind... Let me see if I can do this with the screen. I don't know if this will work. You have my number on there? Can you give me an incoming call, please? You know, and its first responsibility is to be a phone, so we'll see if this works. It should. The 213-4596? No problem. <laughs> This is really what I was checking for. So I really quickly should put him in on my favorites so I can say, see Al? <coughs> of course, I'm on AT&T, so it probably won't ring at all. Okay, so look at the phone here. So this is an incoming call. Now, I have it on silent, but because I have a headphone jack a he plugged into my headphone jack, okay, it's ringing through here, like if I have a headset on but the phone itself is not ringing because I have it on silent, okay? So there it shows I've got a missed call. I'm gonna have you call again here. What I want you to point out, let me just get rid of that. Okay, Al, if you wouldn't mind calling again. Now, when my screen comes up, actually let's, you'll notice on the screen I have remind me so if I tap remind me, he'll go right to voicemail and it can remind me in one hour or when I leave here or when I get home to call him. And it's already sent him to voicemail. Okay, so I don't want to get disturbed. Now, in one hour, it's really simple. If I say one hour, this will pop up and remind me to call Al in one hour. If I say when I leave, when I leave here, It'll pop up and remind me. I'm in a meeting. I don't want to. I don't want to be disturbed because I'm teaching you guys. If I had tapped when I leave, if I get 300 feet away from here, it'll pop up and say call Al. Or when I get home, well, how does it know where I am? And it's got the GPS, and it's got an elect. It's got a a geographic fence, a geofence around me that no matter where I am. I'm big enough, but I have this big sphere of influence. It's my GPS fence that goes around with me wherever I am. And when I say, okay, when I get away from this current location, alert me. And it'll tell me. But also, I have my own home in my address book. 
So when I get within 300 feet of my home, it will pop up and say, remember to call out. We're going to talk more about that geofence later. Now, first of all, how cool is that? You're in a meeting. You don't want to be disturbed. I've got it on this. I'm in the theater. I can say, boom, re re when I call. Okay? So I'm going to hit cancel. I'm going to in indulge Al to call me one more time. Oops. I'm calling. Oops, oops. See, I accidentally swiped it to call him back. So turn my phone off. Hang on. Let me get the iPad off of here a second. Oh, oh he left, left me a voicemail, kind of. All right, let me get the iPad off of here so we can see full screen. All right. So if I want to just reject the call, or you mean turn the screen off? Yeah, that's the sleep-wake button. So if I want to reject the call, though, I can also tap the sleep-wake button at the top. That turns it right to voicemail, okay? But it also sends the call right to voicemail without having to go through all the, Even if the ringer was on, I can tap that, and it'll, it'll silence the ringer and then send it there. Go ahead, Al, please. So it's a computer that happens to make phone calls. So there we go again. So I slide to answer, obviously, or if I have a headset, I tap it. But where it says message, if I tap message, I have the choice, as long as he's calling me from a mobile phone, of, I'll talk to you later, it sends him a text message right back. Or, I'm on my way, or what's up, or I can create a custom one that says, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Stalker. <laughs> so it sent him a text message, a text message that says thanks. Now, if someone's calling me from a home phone, it won't work. This is also why it's very important when you put people in your address book, make sure you put if it's a mobile phone or a home phone because only mobile phones can receive the texts. And more and more people are, are really their mobile phone is their only phone and their home phone is used less and less. But in this case, it sent him a text saying that. Okay? So let's go in more and more into the phone. On the edge, the one on the no, the volume ones. Uh, does volume reject? I don't. I can't remember on that. But I know if you tap the one on top, it'll it'll stop it ringing and send it right to voicemail. Okay, but you have those nice options that we showed there. Oh, okay. Well, no, I don't. But that's AT and T. Well, let me talk about this for a second. So I, I've been dissing on AT and T, rightly so, but I've been with them forever, and I like punishment. Um, <laughs> they're getting better. Okay. Well, so the deal is, there are three. There are four major carriers right now: Sprint, Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T. AT&T was the one that started from the beginning, and I keep AT&T. Oh. <laughs> Nice class, oh, my favorite. Oh, he's got my, Al said I'm in his favorites now. Thank you, Al. I won't show you mine yet. I'll show, I'm going to show you how to add Al to my favorites is what I'm going to do. So uh, AT&T started from the beginning. I'm lucky enough to have what they call their unlimited plan, which was a throwback to the original iPhone. Um, but... AT&T and T-Mobile use what's called the GSM network, which is just global blah, blah. Anyway, what that is, is that's what you mostly use most throughout the world. Verizon and Sprint use CDMA, is a different kind of protocol. Now, what their setup is, is currently, and this is changing in the near future, is on, T on Sprint and Verizon, you can't make phone calls and be on the internet at the same time. And the original iPhone, which is making its way around, and I hope it makes it back to me at some point. Okay, can you bring it up to this, to the, to this row, because the site hasn't seen it yet, please? Um, on Verizon and, and uh, Sprint, you're not able to make voice calls and do the internet at the same time which isn't a huge deal. The original iPhone couldn't do that either on their edge network, but 
it means that if you're talking to someone on the phone and you want to look up a place to go have coffee that's nearby, it won't do that if you're on Verizon or Sprint. That's going to change shortly. And as I used to warn people about that, just so they knew, it's not a huge deal. If I'm on the internet and I get a phone call, the phone call takes over. On AT&T and T-Mobile, you're able to do both. Or as I say, on AT&T, you just can't make any phone calls at all because there's no reception. <laughs> so, but ironically, on AT&T, I get better reception for data. And soon, our phone calls are going to go over the data side. So it's essentially two different things. There's the phone call chip and there's the data chip. And very soon, the data side is going to carry all of our voice. I don't know if you've seen the new Verizon's ad. They call it their, what is it, XLTE or something like that. That means the voice is going to start going over their LTE. Billy, you had a question? Yeah. Um, I have Verizon. Mm -hmm. And I'll be talking on the phone. And then I'm going to look up something. You know, if you're at home on your Wi-Fi, that doesn't apply. Ah. Good question, though. So Billy said, Billy... Billy's pointing out that when she's at home or somewhere where she has Wi-Fi, she can go on the internet. So what happens is when you're on Wi-Fi, that's how you're getting your data so your phone can still go. I made a mistake there by not, by not enunciating that. So realistically, if you're out and about and you're only where you have cell tower for your data. Well, and let's talk about that a second. If you look at my iPhone, I've got three bars of coverage and I have a little Wi-Fi logo right there. If I turn my Wi-Fi off, which I'm not, because you're not going to see this, it would show LTE or 4G or 3G, which means the left-hand side is how my signal strength is to the towers. Okay? And here's, here's what happens. When your signal strength to the towers, mine just dropped to two, when your signal strength to the towers drop, your phone's battery will be lessened because... Even though it's a computer that happens to make calls, its first and foremost responsibility is to be able to make calls. So it wants to keep seeking out and finding a cell tower for you to connect to. Right now it's in the background and it's looking for the cell towers and when you start a call it will then boost its energy but it needs to be looking at the cell towers constantly because you might have an incoming call. But once you start initiating, initiating or receiving a call, it'll try to boost the power a little bit. It's really a power-saving thing, so our batteries will last. But when you're on Wi-Fi, the data is all being brought in by the Wi-Fi. In the near future, we're going to be able to call over the Wi-Fi. So the, the cell phone operator stuff, they're going to kind of just be data pipes, kind of like your home phone now. You know, there's UMA, which I really encourage, or Vonage, or one of those. You don't necessarily need a hardwired phone anymore. You're using Comcast or Uverse, and they're doing the phone over the internet. You're doing it on the data side. Keith? I know some people who have Skype on their mobile phone. How does that type buy into So the question is, some people have Skype on their mobile phone, and in fact, I have Magic Jack on mine and all that. It uses the data side. So that means if I'm in, as I was in South America, and I needed to call back because my mom's car was in the shop up here, I used my magic jack, or I used another one at the time called whistle phone, but I, had a, I was able to be on data, so I'm just paying the internet cafe for their Wi-Fi use, or at a hotel that includes it, and I was able to make the phone call over the data side, which in this case was Wi-Fi, or if I don't have Wi-Fi and I'm doing Skype, it's not using the cell side of phone, it's using the cellular data which of course is unmeasured and it's only just using your data. And, and so a Skype video call will use a lot of data, but a Skype audio call uses very little data at all. And of course FaceTime now can do both video and audio. So that sounds like the brand, like Kleenex. What? The branding. Skype is the brand name for this. Skype is just, Skype is, Skype is an internet telephone service. And what are other names for similar services? Vonage, Magic Jack, FaceTime. Uh, Viber? Yeah, Viber. Viber's an app. So the other person has to have Viber, right? And you have Viber and you communicate. Skype. Skype to Skype is free. It's internet phone calling, right? So all, it, all the whole thing is is they use the data side 
The only thing that can use your cellular voice side is the phone component in there, which is strictly that phone, the green button, okay? So it get, gets in a little weeds here, but just think of it as it uses data. Now, a Viber can't call a Skype, and a Skype can't call a Viber. <clears throat> and those all pay extra if you call a landline is what it is. Okay, there was another question. Go ahead. Do you really want to know? <laughs> It, they ran out of acronyms, so it stands for long-term evolution. <laughs> so remember those little things where the, you know, you got the monkey walking like this, and then they get more upright and more upright, and then oh, finally we've got beyond Neanderthal, and we have long-term evolution. <laughs> Great question, though. Really, LTE is the newest and fastest data service. And LTE, believe it or not, if you have strong bars on, on Verizon or in, in T-Mobile's rolling out a bunch of LTE now, LTE is fast. I tested LTE once I got the, the iPhone 5 and newer uses LTE. Before that, it wasn't available on the chip. It's a frequency. I test at La Placida, you know we have our EmpowerMac classes out there. I was at La Placida and I saw, oh, I have five bars, so I did a speed test. I got 25 megs down. That's as fast as my internet at Comcast at home, and Comcast is fast internet. Wicked fast. So you can really burn through your data pretty quick if you want to. But LTE is just a, a newer thing. 4G was kind of fourth generation, so we had 3G. Well, we started with Edge. The original iPhone was Edge. They call that 2.5G. Then 3G was a bit faster service, which then allowed voice and data to peacefully coexist. Then we went to 4G, fourth generation. Now LTE is, and 4G get used similarly, but LTE is faster. And actually in, uh, that's the, it's, it's really the future. Believe it or not, if there weren't data caps on it, you could use that for your home internet and you'd be wicked fast. I noticed that the four uh, dots on the well, let's see if I can block it. No, <laughs> go ahead. Why does that change? Sunspots, and I'm not kidding. Could be sunspots, different It's a, it's a, it's essentially a radio. No, it's pro it, it's it triangulates between the cell sites, and and it those transitions from cell site to cell site are pretty darn easy. But let's not get in the weeds too much on that. But it just, it's going to vary. And it could be the position of the phone. I can make it go down by giving it the death grip. Or try to. <laughs> it went up. <laughs> I'm an enigma. So if you have really bad reception, come see Ken and I'll hold your phone for you. <laughs> No, but that's, it's really, and, and you have to think about this, this little itty bitty device, if you think back to Michael Douglas in the original Wall Street movie, you know, he had the brick phone here with his big antenna on it. I mean, realistically, look at this little thin device, and we're getting pretty good reception. It's really now not so much the phones are going to increase in reception. LTE, as long as, when we can start calling over LTE, LTE has better coverage and we'll be able to get better coverage through that. So, all right, you had a question? When you're traveling, you should go to better areas. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, what that is, and, 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 and believe me, thank goodness you have an E, because if you don't have an E, you have nothing. So E is the edge network, which is point two and a half, which is the old, old thing. Now, I'll give you an example of that. I uh, was in Angel's Camp, and I had to go over the Sierras to, uh, God, I forget the name of the town. But I went into Apple Maps, which we're going to talk about in about four minutes, and I was able to plot my route. Thank goodness, because I'm doing this just after sunset. Highway 4 is a very narrow road. In fact, it's so narrow, it's a highway. They don't put center stripes down at some places because the road's that narrow. They'd be going, well, if you try to squeeze here, we're squeezing you too much. So I was out of cell service for an hour and a half. 
but my GPS still worked. Luckily, I had put the map in there first, and I'm driving at night, and I'm able to see, because I have a mount for my phone right next to me, right next to my steering wheel, and I'm able to see when any of the tight bends were coming up. And it was really funny. It says, no service, right on the top. So I'm out on the edge. And then the person I was meeting had sent a text message, and all of a sudden, I get over the pass, and all of a sudden, ping, a text message comes up. I look, it says, no service. Well, somewhere for a second there, I had service, and it put the text message in. So I pulled over type my text message back and hit send. It didn't go right away, but as I got to another curve in the road, boom, it sent it. So, uh, but anyway, you will get, your GPS is navigable with it. If you spend a lot of time out where you have very limited coverage, you can buy an onboard map, and I recommend Navigon, which is one of the best. It's around 40, 50 bucks. And the maps, you download them and they reside on your phone. So therefore, you could have your, your cell service completely off and the map will still work because the GPS works on the phone. Okay? That also applies to your iPad, which you may want to be out of cell service. All right. A few more things about phone. So if I go here to my main phone, Al, Al, Al called me. So if I hit my green iPhone and if I go to recent calls... At the top, I can show all my recent calls or my not-so-recent calls. But if you'll notice to the right of Al, his name shows up because he's in my address book. This person is not in my address book. So therefore, only the number shows up. So Al's already in my address book. So I can just hit that, and it shows me where he is. Right? This is all. Sorry, Al. We're throwing, showing your stuff here. We'll go down here. And I can, oh, I can block that caller. I do that. I have this, this survey robocall that calls me. And it shows up survey robocall. And I can just do that and know I don't have to answer because I've given them that name, survey robocall. Or I can block that caller and I never see it. But I'm going to add to favorites. Now I'm going to put his iPhone in there. And now Al is in my favorites. <coughs> if I go over here, mom's in my favorites, of course. And there's Al in my favorites. And that's a photo of Al. That's probably yours, or did I? That's the one you have. So when he called me, it shows me that photo. So when it rings, it shows me Al's photo. And by the way, you know how when he called, it was a small picture? In iOS 8, they're going to make it full size picture again so you can see the picture of who's calling. And it doesn't have to be a picture, it can be a, you know, like mine could be a shark's logo or something like that. So back to the phone. We've got our tray along here. So favorites, all I have to do is tap it. Or for instance, like uh, my, my friend Angie Hernandez, if I tap hers, I can choose her other phone numbers there. And contacts are right here. Oh, recents, contacts. I can go through here. Ken, how do I add a contact? It's really easy. Where do you think you had a contact there? Hit the plus. And this is where it's important to put the information in where it goes, first name, last name, etc. And then when I hit add phone, let's see, we'll just call it test. Oops. And I'm going to add a phone. Now, where it says home, I tap on it, and I can say, and if it is an iPhone, tap iPhone. If it's a mobile phone, tap mobile. And the reason being is because of messages, which we're going to talk about in a second. Or I can add a custom label. I have different labels I've made here, but you can attach it so it could be wife's phone or you know work second work number or secondary phone, something like that. So I'm going to hit cancel and I will get rid of that. All right. Oh, by the way. Usually when you look at your address book like this, if you, a lot of people forget their own phone number, you slide down and your phone number shows up at the top. And that search, anywhere we see a magnifying glass with a search on it, we tap it and now I can type Al. And there's anybody that's Al, A-L, and of course it's right there. And even if... Uh, Give me a street name of your, your street name. 
Comstock. C O M S. So look at that. I started putting Comstock in, and it shows me that Al's Comstock. So if I want to find everybody I know that lives in Reno or something like that, the search searches everything, including notes. Go ahead. Yeah, you had a screen up there showing the phone number. The ones in red were mobile. No, the ones in red were recent call. Recent. The ones. They're the ones that are in my recent call. Okay, so, so no, that's a good example. So if I go to, uh, let's say Jim Cerrone here called me earlier this morning, and if I tap on that, the red one is the one that was in the recents, and these are his other calls is what that is. So it's just saying, okay, that was it. And if I tap on the person, it'll call them immediately. Okay, sure? I get confused between the Red and black. I, I'm not sure. Is that outgoing income? No. Red is missed. So when I tap missed, those are calls I didn't answer. They either went to voicemail or didn't go to voicemail, but they're missed calls. Black calls are either received or made. Okay? Good question. Keith? On my, my Mac at home, under contact, I can boot people by group, by functional groups, mm -hmm. work groups, or Group or or whatever. Sure. I can't do that on the iPhone. And I, so good. I, at least I don't know how to do it if I can. So we thought that was going to happen in iOS 7. I haven't heard if that's going to be able to be done in iOS 8. So the deal is, let's say you have, uh, like we have all the MacNexus Board of Directors. If I have a group of the MacNexus Board of Directors, I can create that on my Mac or if I go to iCloud.com on any computer and do it, I can create a group. On here, I can't create a group, but if a group's created and I tap on groups here, I'm able to select my groups. I can utilize the groups, I just can't make a group. Up on the very top, right up here where it says groups. Okay. And I go there, and, and, that's all of you. and I can turn a group on or off. You know, if you have a really long list, but you only want to see family, you would tap your family group. And then in your phone book, that's all that's going to show up. But it doesn't mean the others disappear. They're just hidden. So I guess that's the same. <laughs> they, don't, they don't not exist. They're just hidden. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think an iOS 8 will probably be able to. But for right now, you have to make your groups on your Mac. I have a feeling they were tr they were trying to get it in iOS 7, indications were, but it didn't. So I keep talking about iOS 8. Well, we'll talk about that after the break. So there, go ahead. Uh, yeah, you said earlier, make sure uh, to note the phone number in your, in your address book as mobile. Uh, and now I'm seeing that in some cases, a lot of places, I've still I've noted it as 7. So I as what? Have, I've seen it as 7. Like, see, right. You've put those words in there, or that's what it says on the left? When I tip, when I tap a contact, uh, does it say? Does it say here, cell? Yeah. Okay, that's okay. That's just a title you gave it. Yeah. Now it may run into a problem. When we get into messages here. It likes mobile because if you'll notice when it's and it's a mobile, I have the option of a text message or a phone call. So this is Adam. I can't even remember who the heck Adam is. But if I want to send him a text message, I tap that. And then it starts doing a text message. If I go back to that and I hit the phone, it does a phone call. What's really cool is I don't know. I think he has an iPhone, but here is FaceTime to another uh, to another iOS user, and there's FaceTime audio now. Let's. Uh, are you on Wi-Fi? Uh, no. Do you? Uh, you're on unlimited data though. Um, so I guess I can FaceTime you now, or it's uh, we couldn't used to. So if I go to Al. I can, I'll just, fa well, I'll FaceTime like this. This is FaceTime, this is FaceTime video to Al. Right. You guys want to have your phone up and look down because you don't get triple chin, quadruple chin. <laughs> <laughs> and 
not that it's not there. Probably not connecting. Okay. Anyway, that's how you do it. And the audio. Audio would be. There's no face. There's no face. It's audio only, but the, that's just been recently added. And the reason for that is it uses the data side. So anybody with an iPhone or an iPad or even your Mac can give and receive FaceTime calls, and now you have audio. I hate video calls. I'm a multitasker. I'm talking to you on the phone, but I'm doing about 12 other things. And, believe, and so I sit there with a video call, and I'm like going to sit there because uh, kind of. So I hate video calls. Anyway, um, so the, the audio is great on FaceTime, and that gives you free calling to any Mac or any iPad, as long as they have the newer versions, and it goes over the data side. I cannot do that to somebody's home phone. Okay? If we're looking at our phone with contacts here, we've identified uh, a contact where a uh, husband has a cell phone and a wife has a cell phone. And oh, hang on. We're, oh, it's even on my iPad. All right. See, there he is. Hey. <laughs> Oh, well, let's, oh, but you know what, Al? I want you to be able to see my class, so I'm going to turn my phone around, and now Al sees my class. Or actually, why don't you go ahead and reverse yours, Al, and we'll see it. The flip, the flip of the camera. There he goes. So he's using the front-facing camera. So if the kids are doing something goofy, see, I can take a picture of Al taking a picture of us. <laughs> oh, wait. No, i got to flip mine. There. There's Al taking a picture of us. So you've got a front and a back camera. All right. Thanks, Al. Can, can, can it be done I'll say no. Uh, FaceTime was able to, is able to support that on the Mac. I'm not sure about here. It, I don't know if it's still in there. Well, no, it was iChat. iChat allows you to do a four-way video call, and it puts three people up and then one person in the center, which is you. It's kind of kind of cool. But that would be using not not iChat anymore, but messages, and I'm not sure if it's still included. Yeah, uh, getting back to the uh, context here, where we have two people at one contact with some numbers, it does not give the bubble. Yeah, um, have you, have they phoned you or you phoned them ever? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I would go ahead. So what you can do is try send them a text message to that number just going into messages. I'm going to go into messages in a minute. And then if it does it, it might show up there, but I'm not sure. So that's, that's a stump the Kenner, so. Back in the back first. Oh, on the con oh, when the, okay. So when I go to contacts and I go to the main all contacts, I just pull down. Hmm. And, but there's a list there. Is there a search a search part? You might be on iOS six. Turn yours towards me. Pull down. Oh, you know what? I think it might be a setting. Let's look at that. Let me look real quick. Uh, setting in mail contacts and calendars. No, that's interesting. Uh, send me an email. I'll look into that. But I, that's weird. Huh. Okay, so all of those people go to this side of the room. <laughs> and the rest of us will sit and go, neener, neener, neener. Um, yeah, I don't, I'll, to, I'll look into that, so sorry. Um, I, I only kind of lied, okay. What was that? You, had, you have to make sure there's nothing in your search. So you had a question there? Yeah. We're into service, right? So I'm right on this. I'm totally in that. 
Is the only way to change the length of your ring is to call your service person? That's what somebody told me. Because I'm always looking for my phone, and I only see my call. Like how many? There's no way to change the number of rings on the phone. Okay, somebody said I can call my service provider. Is that true? You can call your service provider all you want. I'm not sure if you'll get anywhere. Because <laughs> oh, okay. they're called a service provider, but just because it's part of their name doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get service. But uh, I will say I, I call my service provider for the same reason and they change it. Good. So that's a Verizon success story, and I think they can. And see, it's, it's a little strange because... The, so is there anybody here that hasn't used their voicemail on their iPhone? Okay. It was, sorry, we'll skip past you. Um, the original iPhone, this was one of the hardest things, and this is why they went with AT&T. You know, think about voicemail before. You'd call a number, and you'd have six messages, and then you have that aunt or uncle that talk and talk and talk. Oh, what number is it to fast forward? What number is it to delete? I can't remember. Because you really want to get to the thing about the, the fact that uh, whether you have tickets to the, to the movie that night and it's three messages later. Well, Apple convinced AT&T. They, they didn't just reinvent the phone. They reinvented voicemail. The old days, you'd call into your voicemail. Or you'd listen to your tape on the machine, but on your cellular phone, you'd call in. They loaded voicemail onto your phone, and they called it visual voicemail. And with visual voicemail, I can pick which ones I want to listen to at one time, and I can save them. And they actually live on your device, just like a song. So therefore, you can start them, you can stop them, etc. And that's under voicemail. And if I go to voicemail here... Here's, here's some. So I go along here. Now, Al sent me a voicemail, and most of these are pretty short. And there's a little bit longer one. So I'm going to tap on the voicemail. I'll bet it's because, oh, there we go. So hang on. Oh, it's because we quick clicked the speaker or headphones. Hang on here. All right. So he speak, yeah, hang on. It's because it's using the speaker because of the way this thing goes on my screen. But one thing you need to do is if I delete Al's voicemail, I have to scroll all the way down. Yes, I have too many there. And I can hit deleted messages. And then all my ones that I thought I deleted are here. And you have to hit clear all. So it throws them in the trash, but then you've got to go in and empty the trash. So that's a very, once you've deleted a voicemail, it's not deleted until you go to deleted messages and then go to the trash and delete it, okay? You want to get rid of them because it takes up room on your phone. Okay, here's another one from Al, so I tap it. Screen will come back, that's just the voicemail going, so when it stops. Let me make the screen come back. So now I tap delete. Now I have to scroll all the way down to the bottom of my voicemails and I go to deleted messages and there it is. I could restart it, I could still play it, or I just hit clear all. And then it says, well, are you sure? You know, you've gotten three steps to get here. You want to make sure because if it didn't Apple somebody blame Apple oh it only took me two steps to delete my, my voicemail question was right so it's a two step process it's just like on your Mac you throw something into the trash but it's not truly deleted until you empty your trash okay and just you know your trash comes once a week so like at home go ahead Uh huh. Would that be the same if I had an iPhone? All your stuff, yeah. All so, stuff 
So before we break, let's kind of talk about that since it did come up, and then we'll go into more stuff after the break. But we have... iCloud. So we have an iPad, an iPhone, and a Mac. The time you invest in your contacts and getting them correct is going to help you in the future so dramatically. Because if I have a map and I create a group or I adjust my contacts, when I do it, it goes to the cloud. The cloud is the intermediary. Don't worry about it. It works. It's there as long as your iCloud is set up. And then if I add that new contact, it comes down to my iPhone and to my iPad. Okay? Follow me so far. I made, or, I made or adjusted a contact that went to the cloud. Now it comes down once these guys are on the internet and connects with that. So let's say I just made that person with just a phone number. Now I'm gonna add their address from my iPad. If I add it to my iPad, it goes back to the cloud and it still goes to the phone and it goes down to the Mac. The iCloud is the intermediary. If I make changes on my iPhone, it goes to the cloud and propagates down to all my devices. I can also go to my iCloud from any old, even a PC with a keyboard by going to iCloud.com. And all my stuff's there. And I can modify it there also. Mary. Um, somewhere in various settings, my iPad, maybe three-quarters of my that's that's a whole separate thing you probably have some Yahoo or Gmail contacts that are syncing in that aren't iCloud so it's a specific case let's address that on a you can go into when I do a contacts cross I show how to eliminate duplicates when I do when I do contacts in calendar Judy a syncing question yes Okay, that can be fixed. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, she's on this side now. Hers showed up on how to see your own number. I don't either. But she's going to work on it and let us know. So it's magic. It's it, Maybe it's a group thing. You know, it's being around the group. It's kind of like a group thing. I don't know. Um... <laughs> did you? What did you do? Anything? So by deleting stuff, she got it to show up. The own number. All right. Well, we'll leave that. Um, are we supposed to break it? Yeah, I think we're supposed to break now, right? Ten twenty. Now. Why don't we take a break now and come back in about ten minutes? Oh, I got to stop the recording.